Good evening, everybody. Um, I can't talk. Can you tell? Let's try that again. Good evening, everybody. It's Virginia Amos, and we're back with another episode of the Virginia Amos Show, where I get to talk to the people, the businesses, and the organizations that make Alexandria such a great place to live and work. Um, this next interview, we've been we've been trying to line it up for a couple of months now, and it, it's taken some time. But I am delighted that tonight we are going to welcome we are welcoming Megan Foran and Tim Shaheen with Alexandria and Company. So welcome, Megan and Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice to be here. Great. Um, I want to give you. I want to give our uh, listening audience a little bit of background, and then we'll just kind of do a kind of a progressive history. Um, many of you may remember a, um, a a business, a long time business in Alexandria on uh, Royal Street called Lawrence Miller. And if you ever had to have silver fixed or polished or um, appraised, Lawrence Miller was the place to go and have that done. And that's actually where I met Tim. And um, as, like many other things, that part of the business kind of moved on. And Tim and Megan are now the proprietors of uh, Alexandria and Company, which is devoted to fine jewelry. And uh, that's kind of where, where we're going to start tonight and uh, what that progression was, was like for you on uh, Royal Street. Um, sure. So, yeah, I think Tim would be the one to answer that. He's the... Yeah. So uh, my, my family had known Lawrence for a long time uh, and we kind of reconnected at a certain point where he was ready to just focus on running the workshop and not run any aspect of the business. Uh, so my family um, kind of invested and bought, bought him out basically in 2005. Oh, okay. uh, and, you know, when I started, I didn't know what color a ruby was. And I was, <laughs> you know, really focusing more on the, the front side, the business side of the business, not on the workshop. Uh, and over the years, it didn't take very long, but certainly over the days, months, and years, you know, I grew to kind of fall in love with the workshop and the people who worked there and the projects that came in and out of our workshop. Um, and it was just, it was exciting. Every day was new and every project was different. Um, I loved the history of the pieces we worked on. Uh, and then over the years, you know, I started actually uh, getting more experience on the jewelry side, mm -hmm. particularly the custom side. And that side of our business um, each year seemed to take on more and more significance. And that's kind of where our business has evolved, uh, mostly into the, the jewelry design um, side of the business. And, and it's, it's been exciting. Uh, and then I guess it was earlier this year, Lawrence took a wonderful opportunity working at a museum in DC, uh, getting to work on fabulous pieces. and. Um, I think we, we still see him regularly. And I, I think it worked out really well for him. Um, Megan, again, you know, just similar to me, kind of came in to help out. And, uh, and I think, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but I think fell in love with certain aspects of the business and saw many things that could be improved upon. Uh, but I'll let her take over. <laughs> no, I'm so um, what, now, were you were you married when you came in to help out? Uh, no, actually. So, uh, oh, that's I an even better to, story. Yeah. <laughs> so when um, we were introduced by a friend of ours who actually worked at the store, um, just kind of similarly to help on Saturdays and you know be a face that could help clients, and she thought Tim and I should meet. We did kind of started dating and I at the time was working a Monday through Friday regular job and Tim always works, you know, Tuesday through Saturday. Mm -hmm. And so I started to just come on Saturdays to be able to spend more time with him. Um, I kind of, I like working with people and I liked the clients and I like, um, you know, kind of the aesthetic of what we do. And so over time, I just 
spent more and more of my energy there and finding more things that we could do to elevate the business a little bit more. And then after we had our son, we decided that was a, a good opportunity for us to go in on this together and run it exactly how we wanted it to be. Oh, that's, that's a great story. I love that. So um, you also kind of transitioned your physical space. Yeah. So we used to be on the ground floor in kind of the front facing shop mm -hmm. at 121 South Royal. We were there for a long time and we decided to move to the second floor of our building um, just in order to be a little bit more consultative and private. Um, we really run our business on having in-depth long conversations with clients to answer all their questions and make sure that we're giving them all the attention that they need for the, the piece that we'll be working on. And just that ground floor space, there were so many interruptions and it was really hard to focus and get our work done in the way that we wanted to do it. And so moving upstairs really um, helped us cultivate that appointment basis type of way of doing things that has worked out well for us. Good. And I know that pre-COVID, you had looked, you were devoting that space to pop-up shops, which is yeah. kind, of, kind of new for Old Town, but um, yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. catching on. Um, but, but right now, you're, you're pretty much empty in that space. Well, so it's, it's called the Seedling Collective, and we actually hosted, we were fully booked through 2020, um, ah. but we had a, an educational pod there. So it was a group of students who were, um, kind of had their own teacher and they were doing their distance learning classes through Seedling. Um, we've decided not to do any retail reservations until things really settle down because this was getting too difficult to Pull people to the reservation and things keep coming up that make it difficult for people to hold pop-ups. So just make it easy. We're, we're only doing like private workplace reservations and photo shoots and things like that. Okay. Um, so just for our listening audience, throughout, we're going to be bringing up some images of rings uh, that Tim has designed. We're going to be talking a little bit about them. So if you have any questions, uh, you know, please uh, let us know and we'll try and ask as we go along. But Tim, I, I mean, I know until I actually had it done, I was pretty intimidated by the idea of actually having a piece of jewelry made because it, it seemed prohibitive <clears throat> and um, it just wasn't something that I knew that anyone had ever had done. I mean, when people sure. got engaged, they went to Tiffany's, or if you were in Richmond, you went to Bailey Banks and Biddle, and, you know, that's where your jewelry came from. Sure. So I, I'm fascinated by the design process, and I, I think that I'd like to take a little bit of the mystery out of it. So if you could walk us through, you know, if a couple comes to you and, or a single person comes to you and, right. and says that they want to do something, where, where do you start? Uh, that is, I don't know how to answer that question. That's, a, it, that's it, a big question. Some people come in with a fully formed concept and, and you know, sometimes that makes for an easier experience mm -hmm. to, to make. Something. Sometimes someone has very, very rough ideas of what they have in mind. Um, and that's, you know, that's pretty typical actually. And, and that's part of the fun of, of coming up with um, ways to pull these, you know, sometimes cohesive ideas together. Sometimes people come in with conflicting uh, oh, yeah. themes or objectives. And those are oftentimes very frustrating, but all, almost always the most rewarding projects. Uh, so you know, I, I've, I've come to appreciate them for what they are, which is, you know, something to work through. And that's, that's, that's part of, you know, my job. Uh, and the reward at the end is, is almost always, you know, exceptional. Um, just because, you know, the, these, these challenges, uh, they're hard to reconcile, but, but there is a way to do it. Um, you know, we want anytime we, we sit down and meet with someone, it, it should be a personal experience. And, um, you know, if someone had a thousand dollar budget and they wanted a ten carat diamond, sometimes it's hard to 
to fit that square. Um, but, uh, you know, as long as someone's expectations can fit within a budget, you know, we, we love working with, um, with, with their ideas. Okay. Um, one of my favorite projects was a, a one thousand dollar you know ring for a good friend, and it was very thoughtful, uh, and it was it was a beautiful outcome. That that's really lovely to know mm-hmm. that that you are and will work within a budget because I think that mm-hmm. is what concerns so many people that you know this isn't going to be something they can afford or yeah. um, it's it's just totally out of their range. Um. What are some of the trends that you're seeing in in jewelry right now, um, or are you? Um, you know, so much of what we do is pretty timeless um, that I often have a difficult time answering that question. But I would say overall, we're seeing a lot more interest in yellow gold than we did two years ago. Um, I think brides are getting more comfortable asking for what they want rather than what trends are telling them okay. they should have. And so for a long time, you know, they always told that you shouldn't set a diamond in yellow gold. And, you know, we've really kind of taken an approach that says you should set a diamond in whatever you want. And while there are some reasons that you might want to take into consideration, um, you should do what you like the most. Uh, so definitely more yellow gold, more openness to colored gemstones as well. Um, Working more sapphires for people. I think people want more interesting gemstones often than just a, a straight brown diamond. Um, I think overall, really, the trend is just custom design. Um, okay. As we're getting more educated on the accessibility of it, seeing so many different styles that can work with one, uh, and knowing about us, this I think similarly to you where. Previously, those same people thought that was out of bounds. Now they know that that's within their own reach. That's nice to hear. Um, I've always been a yellow gold fan. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, my, I remember my mother's rings were in platinum, and I, at the time, that was actually strange. Um, mm. But she was a war bride, and it was what was available. The gold yeah. wasn't so. Um, <laughs> You know, there are always reasons behind uh, that, uh, how actually how things come to be. I mean, you, it, it wasn't available and then it was. So, you know, what do right. you do? Um, about the gemstones, are people still as, um, is it still about size or is it more about quality and an interesting setting? It really depends on the client, okay. you know. And, That's and a hard think, one. Yeah, everybody's so different, and I think with us, because we're so client driven, um, you know, we really rely on the client to tell us what they want, and we will explain all the options to them and show them the, the tangible differences between it. Um, I get a lot of brides who don't want a really large gemstone; they want something that is subtle that they can wear every day that isn't going to feel like uh you know uncomfortable on their hand but then i also have a lot of brides who want a a really large sparkly diamond that that's going to show well so it just depends on the personality personality yeah Mm -hmm. so now you all actually source gemstones yes and is there a particular how do you source gemstones? Let's just start there. <laughs> you go and you mine them. <laughs> okay. I, yeah. I uh, we have a number of you know vendors that we work with. Some we've worked with for uh, I mean, our business has worked with for a longer period of time than I've even been involved in it. Um, I would say over the last maybe four or five years, we've uh, as we've increasingly done a lot of custom that kind of forces us to to seek new resources. Um, we found some, some really good resources and mostly in New York, okay. um, that, you know, we can call and place an order, or, you know, give specs of whether it's a budget or a particular size or a particular stone. And, um, usually, you know, unless it's something very exceptional, we can get it within a day or a couple of days. Oh, nice. Get some options. 
We make it pretty straightforward for a client where we get a sense from them of what they're looking for, what is important to them. If they know, then that's great. If they don't know, then we get in gemstones to educate them on what these differences can mean. And then we always expect it to be a multiple meeting experience where because most people are not familiar with what a sapphire can look like in different cuts um, mm -hmm. or what different diamond gratings can actually made in person. And so a lot of it is just getting educated on those gemstones um, and then getting the client comfortable with their decision once they've made it. Um, so we, we source everything, uh, including upgraded gemstones. Um, we're seeing a, a larger demand for those for different reasons. Um, and definitely, uh, I think my favorite is the source for sapphires, but do you favorite? Your favorite is a source for sapphires? It's just source sapphires. Oh. Um, yeah, we have bad sapphires. They're you know, durable and they come in an enormous range of colors. Um, They're interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. David, why don't we bring some of the uh, images up on the screen so we can look at uh, these beauties? So this one was a very... Art Deco inspired design. Uh, a client had, oftentimes when someone has a picture of something that they really like, uh, we, for the, for the sake of just not copying someone else's design, we, we usually try to uh, not do that and instead make something you know unique and personal to that client. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, you know, it, it was a much older piece. It was not a you know a replica, but we we certainly you know borrowed certain aspects from a you know, an Art Deco design that someone had found and, and you know, customize it, change aspects of the shoulder or the engraving. And um, so the end is something that has not been created before. And hopefully will be referenced by someone else. Was there a little band of emeralds on there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, custom cut oh. emerald before. That was very, that's very cool. Okay, let's let's look at another one. I love hearing about how these are have come in, into being. Uh, so this, this I know was a referral, uh, from a neighbor in Alexandria who we, we made an engagement ring and wedding bands for, um, and this was a, a family diamond, um, a large European cut. So the diamonds probably from like the turn of the century, but not later than kind of 1920, 1930. Um, and wanted to kind of reference the period of the diamond the, like the art deco aesthetic um so again a, a lot of what i i do i think ends up or a lot of what we're asked to do is often that art deco aesthetic uh, mm -hmm. there's something very about it it's very interesting decorative uh you can achieve a wide array of, of different effects even within the same kind of right, style right so we've, and we'll get to a couple of more rings um, in a minute, but when we've been talking a lot about rings, um, what other pieces of jewelry do you do? Everything. Everything. Um, so, bracelets. Yeah, so bracelets, earrings, pendants. Um, I think definitely the vast majority of what we do is engagement rings, just because mm -hmm. that's kind of the time when most people are thinking about those. But especially when we have clients who have gemstones, perhaps family gemstones, um, that they want to source into something else, we'll walk them through tons of different options of what you can do with it. Um, and really it's a question of lifestyle. Uh, how much wear do you want to get from it? And what? how do you see yourself wearing this in the future? Um, so often, you know, if we have a client who wants to use their family gemstones in a piece, they might think that they need to put it into something really elaborate. Um, and then I'll talk to them about, well, how much do you want to wear it? Do you want to wear it every day? Or maybe that would be something to just put into a simple necklace or a simple pair of earrings so that you can get the full memory and narrative of the piece without, you know, worrying about it or trying to think of a reason to wear this mm -hmm. crazy new record. And it's been my experience on a couple of things. Just adding even um, the tiniest, let's say, diamonds to something can really change 
the whole personality of a piece. Mm-hmm. Um, I had some um, silver shoe buckles that belonged to my grandmother, mm-hmm. uh, you know, maybe like this big. And I had them and they were monogrammed. And um, I had them turned into um, earrings and on the hoop were just these tiny little diamonds, which mm-hmm. gave it gave it a little bit of sparkle. But, you know, yeah. makes it look me, more finished. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. It Bra- huh? It draws the eye. Certainly. It draws the eye. That's that's a great way to put it. Um, My other favorite piece of jewelry are bracelets. And so I'm always looking for great um, bracelets, but I feel like I'm banging. Does that hurt like gold and silver when you're constantly banging your wrist on a desk or something? It can. It depends on how a piece is made. So we have a a line of bangles that we create um, that are made in-house and we fabricate them by hand. And we chose that design specifically because bangles are kind of a solid piece of metal and it's pretty hard as long as it's a solid bangle okay. to morph that out of shape. But if you have a hollow piece or anything with a hinge, you can really do some damage to it yeah. um, just by wearing it. So we see a lot of um, bracelet repair requests. <laughs> things like that but it just depends on how it's made um really overall i wear two pairs of bangle or two bangles every single day that i never take off i've had them on for six years and they're still perfect circles um so it just depends that's that's good to hear um david let's look at a couple of more rings oh my goodness look at that so that's a, it's actually a Montana Sapphire that we sourced for a client and she wanted the ring set in, um, it's an 18 karat, right? So. 18 karat matte gold. So that kind of gives it that lustrous look instead of a really high shine. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a more uh, kind of classic style for a ring. Um, we see a lot of the, you know, where we have a bride that wants something simple that has a unique element to it, like the Sapphire or the gold thing. Okay. Do you have another one? Do we have one more, David? Two more. Okay. I'm just really, I am love looking at these. Now, pearls. Yes. I've always understood that pearls were soft um, and can be yes. damaged. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So we've, we've made a couple of pearl engagement rings. And what we tell people is just, you know, be prepared to have to replace the pearl at some time in your life, maybe multiple times. Um, and as long as, again, as long as a client knows going into it, what to expect, um, then they're comfortable with what that result could be. Uh, so we've, I know we made one ring that was really you know, much more simple than this. And he loved the idea of having the pearl fall out and putting the pearl into a special box. And over the years, she would accumulate all these pearls that show the relationship over time um, and just show that kind of physical effect of living a, of having a relationship, being in a marriage, and all the, all the dings and things that come up in it. So there's a beautiful way to do it. All right. So, David, this next one. Oh. Another Art Deco piece. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a uh, an Asher cut diamond um, that we sourced from one of our favorite vendors in New York. Um, and this was a, a long process uh, that I think, again, is an example of something that was really rewarding once it was finished. Um, not just because it was finished, but because I think it really was exceptional. Uh, the sapphires around it are a French cut, which means they're just faceted a little bit differently. And because they have to, to trace you know, the outline of the, the Asher cut, every single one of them, in addition to being specially faceted, had to be specially cut for each place within mm. that channel. Uh, and the tolerances on them were exceptional in that, you know, if one corner of the sap, the square sapphire, a trapezoidal sapphire was a tenth of a millimeter too big, or you know, five hundredths of a millimeter too big. 
when you try and set it, you end up tipping one or both of the sapphires. So you have to recut another one. So there's a lot of cutting and recutting and cutting and recutting. And uh, you know, once they're in and everything fits, uh, you know, it's not something that we we need to worry about. But it was it was a it was a process. Uh, <laughs> really. Good. One of our one of our viewers just said that they loved Asher cuts. Um, but another person asked, um, oh, they were they the the Montana sapphire they they saw it as a black stone. But that's actually a good a good question. Are there any black gemstones? Oh yeah. Um, so first of all, sapphires come in all sorts of shades. So they can come in yellow, there are black sapphires, there are green sapphires, there are, you know, if it's, if it's anything except red, it's a colored sapphire of some, some capacity. Okay. Um, other black stones would be, there are black diamonds. Um, oh, onyx. That's true. Yep. Um, oh, you could have black tourmaline. Uh, almost all gemstones, actually, all minerals have a kind of a black variant to them. So Interesting. Definitely. I, I'm definitely familiar with onyx, and I do know black diamonds, but I didn't realize some of the others came um, yep. in shades of black as well. Uh, you know, so you can really see up close when you compare them side by side what black onyx looks like versus a black diamond versus mm -hmm. a black sapphire. You have very different sheens for them. Interesting, and because I think we we get so you know you're kind of tied into the red, green, blue, you know. Rubies, mm -hmm. emeralds, sapphires, um, and it's hard to think about um, when I remember when yellow diamonds became quite yeah. quite the rage. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I do like a good yellow diamond, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to ask it. To, we'll we'll start wrapping up here in a few minutes. But one thing, and I think Megan, when you were talking about the bracelets um, mm -hmm. and how they're done, one thing that I'm always fascinated about when. Uh, I watch something on um, the the jewelry that belongs to the royals, particularly the tiaras. Occasionally they'll say, well, it was meant so that you could take off this piece and use it as something else. That's and incredible. I, I never think of of jewelry as being that pliable and that you could that it could be made so that it could actually be used in a different way without redoing it? Well, it's not that it's pliable. I guess it probably shouldn't be pliable. It's that there's probably a mechanism on it that allows it to be taken off and put into a different spot. So we've designed a few pieces that convert from being a ring to a, a necklace or oh, okay. perhaps, you know, we've made a pair of earrings that you could change the, the gemstone at the bottom of it um, to either dress them up or down. Um, and those are all just different mechanisms that you can come up with. Um, it's a really more of a technical okay. uh, request than anything. And then trying to fit that into the aesthetic mold. Okay. I just, it just always fascinates me that you could, you know, mm -hmm. actually take the stone off the tiara and, and, and yeah, do something. Of course. <laughs> do something you get the most it. wear for that, um, you know, ruby or whatever it is that you're wearing. Um, yeah. I love jewelry. I think it's brilliant. I think any way that you can get more utility out of a piece, the more interesting it is. Right. And there's, and you should, you can wear stones any time of day. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we are huge advocates for wearing, you know, your family heirlooms. Make sure that it's set securely and make sure that it it's, you know, safe to do so. But you should, I think, wear your, your pieces and be proud of them. And try not to design anything that's too precious um, to where you're going to be afraid to, to show it off. Yeah. Um, there are certainly some exceptions to that. You know, there are some gemstones that are just quite delicate, but you know, you just know what you have when you go into it. But you know, it's kind of funny. This goes back to the conversation that we were having offline about um, heirloom silver, which is what mm -hmm. Lawrence Miller did so much of. Is that some people, you know, they keep it tucked away for quote special occasions, and right. and why? Because silver right. is yeah. it's so durable and it's meant to be used. And actually, finding um, aside from from flatware, finding ways to use uh, heirloom pieces of silver 
is great fun. Um, and yes. it's, it's, yeah, it's mm-hmm. unexpected. And it's like, why not? Yeah. And you can always bring it back. You know, that's the value of a, of a fine material. Like what I was saying before is if it's made out of sterling silver, if it's made out of gold, if it's made out of platinum, you can always polish it. You can re it. You can, yep. you know, size it up. You can do whatever you need to do to keep it going. But if it's not made out of a genuine fine material, then you're kind of stuck with it. So you might as well get that use from it and you know, use it for its full capacity. I I couldn't agree with you more. It's um, it's kind of like buying a house versus, you know, renting an apartment. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It it's yours. It's yours. So yeah. um, thank you so much. I have one last question actually. Tim, did you uh design your uh Megan's engagement ring and your wedding <laughs> rings? Yes. Good. The short answer is yes. Uh, <laughs> And, and I and I think um, you know to, not to ramble on, but you know the, the piece that we made it was a, a sapphire that we got on a trip in India, and it was a lot bigger than what we thought we were going to get, and frankly, it was a lot uh, cheaper, <laughs> for lack of a better word, than both, both you know in terms of money, but also in terms of you know the quote unquote quality of the material. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really interesting. It, you know, there was a story behind it. Um, that was personal to us and you know it was a fun process in yeah. a way that i think when you meet with someone whether we're making something that is exceptionally expensive or or much less so you know the, the process should be fun uh and the outcome usually is fun if the process is fun yeah absolutely so please before we go tell people the best way to get hold of you um and where they can find you Sure. So um, best way to get a hold of us is definitely to send us an email. Um, we have a, an inquiries account. So it's inquiries at alxandcompany.com. Um, we check that all the time. And it's the best way to reach us since you can send pictures and a better description of what you're looking for. You can also call us. So our phone number is 703-548-0659. Um, and then you can find us on Instagram as well. Yeah. Um, Oh, good. I've got to. I've got to look you up on Instagram. Um, oh yeah, because I want to see more. I want to see more pictures of, of beautiful jewelry. So thank you so much for being with us today. I know that this is a very busy time of year for you, and that you're actually going to be at the Royal Street Address for the next week, um, yeah. help helping yeah, people. So- yeah, make those final decisions. Yeah, we'll have. Um, we've been by appointment only throughout pretty much the entire pandemic, but we decided to do some walk-in hours as we're heading into Christmas, just because planning is really tough. So we're keeping caps on our capacity and everybody has to wear a mask, uh, but we'll have some walk-in hours this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then also um, Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Uh, okay, so terrific. Okay, so if you need, um, a custom piece of jewelry made if you want to have an heirloom piece of jewelry redesigned if you just want to indulge yourself i absolutely recommend that you call megan and tim you make an appointment for a visit and um you go see the wonderful wonderful work that they do so tim megan thank you again so much for being with us um best wishes for Christmas and as we move into the new year. And remember, be the good news in someone's life. It helps a lot. Good night.